Hey friends, welcome back to the It's Kaylin Gray channel. Today I'm going to be discussing some key essential items that you need in your wardrobe for spring and summer. And I'm going to have my little friend showcase them for you in different ways as I go through these key items. Hey friend, ain't she cute? Anyway, let's get started. So, I 100% believe in this. And this is seasonless, but I believe one staple piece that I cannot live without is a t-shirt. A crew neck, regular, basic Hanes t-shirt. It could be oversized or fitted, but I think a clean white tee is priceless and time, well not necessarily priceless because you gotta pay for it, but it is a timeless piece. And I feel like not enough people are talking about this, but my friend, my well my Instagram friend, my friend in my head, I haven't met her in real life, Patrice Soso, she talked about it. The neck area on a t-shirt is so important. If you do a U-line or like a, a large V-neck, things can get sloppy real fast. But there's something about a crew neck that's super tight around the neck or a very like clean cut V-neck that is just so sensual. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. Your neck on a t-shirt matters. And I think the safest way to go at all times is doing a tight fitted crew neck. Not tight to the point where like you're choking on it, but like a nicely fitted crew neck. And I personally tend to always buy an oversized look. Um, but here and there, depending on what I'm wearing, with it i'll do a more fitted my size my actual sizes are small and then i'll roll with that but most of the time i do a oversized white tee tucked into a high waist pant a mini skirt a mid d skirt any type of look or if you want to just go full on out just wearing a basic white oversized tee as a dress you can do that with a little blazer or a little leather jacket over the shoulder that can get that i, I like that i like that but anyway Definitely need a white t-shirt and basically I like to pair mines with uh, denim, high waist pants, but I love to like tuck just the front of it and let, let the back end just flow. The oversized Hanes t-shirt that I always stock up on every time like spring starts rolling around I get like 10 of them from Amazon just to stock up, make sure I have them and I just rock them in so many different ways. A skirt, a pant with heels or sneakers, it's just clean cut and I like the thickness of this particular Hanes t-shirt and it just never fails. The next item which is also like big deal again this spring summer we've been seeing it for a couple of years back to back in different colorways or different prints um there's a lot of bright colors that are popping with this particular item this season and it's the oversized button down there's something about an oversized button down that literally is just like 90s classic it's that it's not necessarily a walk of shame, but it's that, you know, I spend the night at my significant other's house and I wore their, their business shirt back home and I feel great about myself type of thing. Like, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. And how I love to style it is, you know, not button all of them, maybe like the third or the second one, French tuck one side or leave it hanging open, wear a belt over it, wear it over a mini skirt. Again, you could wear it over a pair of jeans. It's just, it's such a smart looking piece and literally, okay girl, get it. Um, and literally there's so many different ways that you can just fashion it. She cute, I can't take her. Another thing that I think people are playing on this year with the oversized shirt or just button downs overall is playing with the sheer or like a lace or just a different texture. So don't be afraid to go out the box with this classic. I think that's super lit. Like if you can find a classic item, like a silhouette of a classic item and finding in the, in the most bizarre texture or color, those are pieces that are, I feel, definitely give a person individuality it gives it longevity in the piece because it's like if you don't see something like that often and you pull it out of the woodwork and you go to an event or something people are going to stare it's a talking piece it's something to be proud of it's an investment so definitely if you want to stay classic route you know think about the colors you want to wear in them but if you want a bit of edge to it think about textures prints and maybe even metallics to that degree 
but I love a good sheer button down too. And sheer is everywhere this year. So the next major item that I think is super important to have um, is basically a cardigan, like a lightweight cardigan. And the thing is, we've been seeing like brands like Kate go off with this particular moment, okay? And always pairing it with like a knitted bra, matching knitted bra underneath. And we love it, we're here for it. I'm still here for it, but in different colors and textures. For me, I love cardigans all year round. And personally, I love to wear a cardigan with just a beautiful bra underneath it. Button the top button wherever that falls, whether it's below the bra or right where the bra is. And just doing a bunch of necklaces, that is my favorite look to serve. Like, I just think it gives a bit of sensuality and pride to a preppy look. You know, give a little spin on Chad. So that's how I would spin it. But cardigans are the way to go and you can mix and match with so many different things. You could wear it over your shoulders. You can tie it in a knot over your shoulders. You can take it over one shoulder and underneath the armpit and tie right there. That's pretty cute and sassy. And you can even do that with sweatshirts too. I feel like cardigans and sweatshirts, while it's a totally different cut and silhouette, I feel like it gives the same like extra oomph in the outfit or if you're going out and it might be cool later on that night you have something that you could just throw on and it could give a very collegiate look to the whole outfit so definitely don't shy away from like like cardigans sweatshirts something that you can just always throw on if you get a little chilly but keeping in mind the texture the color and the weight of it too for me, another classic item that I feel is all year round, but you definitely want to change the weight of it for spring, summer, so you're not sweating bullets, <laughs> is the menswear high-waisted pant. Like, who doesn't love a clean-cut, high-waist pleated pant? And listen, there's a bunch that you can find at like Frankie Shop. This one I found at Redone, and I wish that they would do it again. I feel like maybe they themselves didn't feel like they sold that well or they didn't they didn't sell enough of but i'm like y'all if y'all don't bring that back and so many other like colorways and and textures and, and prints like i would love but anyway i think it's super smart and chic to have something like this imagine it with an oversized tee or fitted tee a blazer with heels some stan smiths a pair of converse's 70s chucks like I just feel like it can go so many different ways. A pair of sandals, dad sandals. Um, and I like to pay attention that I'm getting the summer wool because that's the lightweight version. Um, and it won't make you feel as heavy and sweaty in the pant. You know, if it's gonna be a warmer climate, always make sure that the material that you're getting is a lightweight, breathable fabric. Um, but yeah, I just, I love this. Don't show off now, don't show off. But I love this look in so many different ways and I have tons of suits that I just take the pants from and I wear those to death. And if you feel like you don't wanna splurge on a pair of pants like that, and this also goes for another item that I think is a key, uh, key factor in the wardrobe, um, go to your nearest vintage store or thrift store and go to the men's section get yourself a full-on suit there are so many grandpappy suits at, at the thrift store like you would be amazed and listen don't be crazy scared about the sizing either take something that's as close to your size and go get it tailored that i feel it's so it really makes something more unique to you and your body type if you take something that's oversized like a fitted suit and you get someone who is a tailor who is a master tailor and they can bring it down to your size and make it look like it was just made for you in a sense it kind of is when you do that so definitely look into and i know i know the y2k trend is all up and popping all up in our faces and i get that and like the low rise thing is a thing like i get it y'all can have fun with it but I'm talking about longevity of, a, of an item. You know, high waist or mid rise is always going to be in style, sleek, and just smart. So yeah, if you wanna do a structured pant like this, but in a low rise version, it'll still have the same aesthetic. Frankie Shop has those types of things right now. But I personally believe in the high waist mid rise moment because it's just a lot more clean cut and you could do a couple of more things with it, like add a cute little belt, you know? Uh -huh. 
And then obviously sticking to the theme of bottoms, you can never go wrong with a, a legging. Leggings, listen, I don't think they'll ever go out of style. Same kind of thing when it when it comes to like a skinny jean. I don't think it really goes out of style ever. But like, you know, you hang them up every so often. But I do believe if you invest in a legging that is a nice, heavy, thick, structured material that's not sheer, you can't see it behind and your panties, right? You want to make sure you can't see too much going on back there. But that is a nice fitted and even maybe like, like these leggings here, they have a zipper on the back. Um, or maybe a legging with a stirrup, you know, make it fun. But I think sometimes when we're not feeling our best around our tummy area, maybe it's that time in the month, we want something that's a little bit more looser fit. And if you go with the legging route, you have a couple of, you know, you have some elasticity going on there where it feels comfortable all the time. It could fit into a nice ankle boot or a structure, um, like a tall boot if you want to do it during the winters. But I just feel like a legging is a classic item that you will always, always need to have and wear. And it's the best traveling item too. You can throw that in the bag and it barely takes up any packing space. Okay, now the next item, obviously a good pair of jeans. And when it comes to denim, I think it's a lot of people's nightmare. I think people having to shop for denim could be very daunting, especially if you're not used to doing it, especially if you, you know, if you don't come from the retail fashion world where you were taught about the many areas of shopping for denim and being an expert in selling denim, right? Not everyone has this extra information, right? So right now, Everyone's going in on low rise, boot cut, wide leg, straight leg, all the things, right? But I think to keep it super classic and you can take it so many different routes, if you get something like a mid rise, high rise, straight leg denim. So you have enough, um, you have enough opening around the leg area to wear a boot underneath or to wear a boot over it. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about what a straight leg should look like. Um, it should be just as clean with a tucked boot as it does with a, a, a pair of boots that the jeans go over. Um, and all different types of washes. I personally, I chose to roll with a beautiful Ecru denim that I got from Levi recently. I think that's going to be one of my summer staples. Wearing it with a white tee and all different types of um, t-shirts or button downs, right? But I just feel like, get it girl, get it popping. Like, if you get the right pair of jeans, it's like, it, feel, it feels like you, you're more you when you find the perfect pair of jeans. What I suggest when shopping for a pair of jeans, and comment below if you want me to do this, if you want me to take you out into a store and record how I go about shopping for a pair of denim, right? We can talk about that. Let me know if that's something you want me to do. But when I go into a store, and I know a lot of people tend to buy denim online, it's a bit harder. I mean, unless you really know your size with the brand and you know what you're looking for and you're used to a particular brand, then so be it do it or you have the funds to buy a plethora of different sizes and styles and figure out which one and then you return the rest that could be a headache for some though so i do believe that the best thing to do when you're investing in a pair of denim is to take the time to go to a department store where they have a good denim section and speak to a specialist within that space another pro tip have a small meal before you go because ain't nothing worse than going into a store shopping for denim to fit you and you hangry. Who would want us to be hangry looking for jeans and then feeling like nothing works for them anyway? You're gonna have a negative attitude while shopping while you look at yourself. If you're fed and you have like a smoothie or like a, I don't know, a Nutri-Grain bar or something, at least you're going into it with a little bit, you know, you have some sustenance keep a positive mindset about who you are and your body type and what you're looking for and pair up with someone who is a pro at selecting denim for people and just go about it that way. It takes some time. Sometimes you have to try on 50 pairs before you find the right one. It just happens that way. 
I personally love denim. I grew up in the fashion space first at Atrium New York. I know a lot of people know about that store. There was a full big ass denim wall that we had to learn all the brands like Seven, J Brand, um, R13. R was R13 I don't know. I don't know. I don't Joe's jeans, but like my my first designer purchase was a pair of Joe's denim, you know? So jeans are the thing. And I love a skinny leg to the day I die to death to us part situation. But right now I'm loving a beautiful straight leg. So definitely went on a tangent about the denim, but I do believe it is important to talk about, okay? Um, and to understand going into it what your mindset should be. The next key item on my list are skirts. Now this season I'm seeing a lot of midi to maxi length skirts which are beautiful. There's so many different ways you can go about styling it and you can wear so many different types of shoes and then take them through different seasons and wear them with beautiful over the knee boots. You know, it's giving 70s flair. Like I'm feeling it, I'm loving it and I'm all up in it, right? And I have a couple of skirts that she's gonna showcase but I love a beautiful long skirt and I feel like sometimes people look at it and they're like oh it's very like it's giving librarian but no it depends on how you style it and what you put on top with it too. It could be very beautiful classic but edgy with a bit, a bit of sensuality to it. I think there's so many different ways you can go about doing it and paying attention to textures or prints mixing them. I think it's a good time but also the mini skirt is high key crazy like this year now i love me a good mini skirt but i tend to prefer the ones that have a little bit longer um like a longer swoop in the back that just covers my tush a little bit more than it does in the front because i don't like to sit down and my cooter is everywhere like i don't want to feel nothing with my cooter i just feel that my booty to my tootie needs to be covered so the mini skirt needs to be long enough to cover all my things when I'm sitting down. Now the girls are wearing the Mew Mew skirts and they look like belts and that's okay. Y'all can have the mini skirts. Do your thing with them. Have fun while they're here because it's not gonna last long. That to me, while it's a trend, to me it's a fad. And it will go in and out very quickly. I don't, I don't really care for it. You know, I think the youngins can pull it off and have so much fun with it. But my only problem is what if you drop your keys? What if you drop your little handbag? What if you drop your phone? Because that's the thing. You know, I. You're gonna be out there. So maybe just wear a long cardigan. I don't know. Okay, next, next item. Next item. Now, I will be the first to tell you this next item has always made me uncomfortable. And I don't I don't know what it is because you know, part of my family comes from the islands. And I should want to wear these more, but I hate wearing shorts. They go up the cooter, they just ride up, they do the thing. So I feel as though if we're getting into shorts, which every year, spring, summer, it's a staple. You're gonna you're gonna wanna wear them. It's too hot to wear anything else sometimes, right? But sticking to a certain formula. For me, I prefer something that's like in between a short short and a Bermuda short. Not necessarily full-blown Bermuda, but like something that just falls at a nice level where it's not long, it's not short enough to go up the cooter just automatically, but long enough to just stay in its place. Yeah, and I like different materials. I don't necessarily love a denim um, short all the time, but like maybe not a neoprene, but something that's like cool to touch in that sense. Um, like these pair, I have a pair of Rick Owen shorts that I just love to be in all the time and they just are so, like the silhouette is so dope. Um, so there's so many different ways you could take a short. You could do the classic look, a denim, close to the body fit. You could do something that's a little bit looser, ripped up the stress, like real rock and roller all over the place. Those are really cool to do with like a cool blazer or, or a leather jacket. Or you could do something that's more like a biker short that length is perfect. I love me a good biker short because they don't move up when I'm walking in these streets. I'm comfortable with the biker short. I'm uncomfortable with a denim booty short. But we didn't really see those on the runway this year, so it's not really part of the trend, you know what I'm saying, the trend conversation. But 
I love a pair of shorts with a beautiful t-shirt and a blazer over my shoulder and a pair of loafers like you can't go wrong and if you want to switch up the look from day to night then throw on a pair of heels popping okay moving right along she like wearing shorts though that one she do because she just modeling them now listen we all know we need a little black dress but I think this year we can change it up and also add in a little white dress or any other color or any other print. I think the dress is something that is just super easy. We're steering further away a little bit from rompers and stuff because <laughs> sis, who really feels like going to the bathroom and stripping down to, to your ankles with your romper? I love me a good mechanic suit or a romper, but like truth be told, when that, when that time comes, I have to pee. And I have to take everything out and everything up here is naked. And I'm in a public bathroom talking about I had to pee real fast, but this romper though. <laughs> no. So definitely digging all the way into dresses right now. I think it's imperative to have like a little black dress. And that can go so many different routes. It can go puffed and baby doll. It can go slick to the body with cutouts. It can go a little sheer. Listen, don't be afraid of the dress. I think having a few staple dresses in your wardrobe is key because you never know. Sometimes you can take a dress and do a beautiful jacket with it with over the knee boots later on in the year. Or you can wear it with dad sandals. You can wear it with sneakers. You can wear it with a pair of heels. You could pair it with different belts. Like you can take it so many different routes. And I feel like a lot of people look at it as just one overpowering item but that depends on the silhouette and the pattern and color but if you pick something that's a lot more classic base then you could take it so many different routes with the accessories that you choose to take that you choose to use so the next item which i live and breathe in i have so many of these things it's ridiculous it's actually ridiculous the oversized blazer the oversized blazer has been a thing for the past couple of years. And I mean, I feel like last year and the year before Frankie Shop, the Frankie Shop really took it, woo, okay? These people, they had this like granddaddy oversized blazer and it was one size fits all for everybody, I think. And I'm talking about the most petite people were wearing these oversized blazers. And to be honest, it looked beautiful. It looked so like classy rocker chic it looks effortless like you don't give a damn like you just throwing these this blazer on your shoulders and it makes the look it makes so many different looks it's the cherry on top to everything so personally yes girl personally i love oversized blazers with most of the looks that i have like most of the key looks or outfits that i go to has room for a blazer and I feel like it just elevates the look. It makes you look smart. It makes you look sharp. It makes you look like you're on point with your business that you about this life. So I suggest investing in oversized blazers. And if some of these brands that are like, you know, high street brands, you're into them, but the price points be like three, four hundred dollars and up. And sometimes that's a that's a that's a pretty chunk of change, okay? It's a lot of bit of change. Maybe just go again to the thrift store, Grandpappy Suits. They all live at the thrift store and there's so many beautiful different types. And sometimes somebody's Grandpappy be dropping off the Italian thread, like the Italian material suit. Don't sleep on those. I definitely, I came across a lot of beautiful Italian suits one year. I got them all tailored for different waist sizes and I kept the jackets in the same size and I sold those. Yeah, I should have kept a lot more of them. But yeah, an oversized blazer, she's dope. Get into the oversized blazer. Or get into your grandpappy's oversized blazer because he not gonna, he not gonna notice. He got so many of them. Anyway, so the next item that I think is for it, it is a forever thing. And you know, we look at brands like Burberry. Y'all know what I'm about to say. The trench coat. And nowadays with all these brands, ASOS has mad trench coats in so many different colors, materials, prints, with the fur on the wrist, like just brows. Give yourself a moment, but personally, I love a good trench in the khaki color, but with a twist. You know, I like my little twist with my edge, right? And 
I feel like you throw it on even over a little black dress. A pair of pants that we talked about earlier, the menswear pants, um, a skirt, like even a gym outfit. You just look like your bills are paid on time. Auto pay. You look like auto pay bills. Yes. I just feel like a trench coat is a must have in everyone's, everyone's closet. And it will, it will probably outlive most of the items that you have. I just. Yeah, you need a trench coat. Bust down to the gauze, like just get a trench coat. And going on with the theme of outerwear. Leather jackets, they're everywhere. And you know what I love about this season's like trending leather jacket situation? They all look vintage and rugged and heavy. And I just feel like those are like Mad Max. Like Mad Max leather jackets. I'm here for it. I love them. They look so sturdy. They stand the test of time. And it's like it makes everything look gorgeous. Imagine leather jacket, white tee, mini skirt, heels. Can't tell her nothing. Can't tell her shit. I just. Get you a leather jacket. And you know what? Don't be afraid of like going oversized with it or getting something, you know, and remember this too. Leather jackets, sometimes when you initially first buy them, they can be a little fitted. They could be a little fitted, um, but over time they loosen up and then they're perfectly yours. You know what I mean when I say that? Perfectly yours. Comment below if you have like a favorite leather jacket. I feel like all leather jackets have a beautiful story attached to them or like a beautiful memory attached to them. Um, but yeah, get crazy with it. Get crazy with the ruggedness. Get crazy with the, the silhouettes and the colors. Um, and think about something that can just stand the test of time. Love a good leather jacket. I've had one from Rag Moan for three, over three years now, almost four. And it looks like I just bought it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I ran out of space, but let's get into accessories really quickly. I'm not gonna do a deep dive into the trends and ins and outs of the accessories, but I'll do another video that taps more into trends and what to shop for, right? But I do believe, you know, when it comes to handbags, I I think that Essentially, you need an oversized bag, a medium lady bag, and a small either evening and or crossbody moment that you could just run around in. I think everyone is living for the hobo size bags right now, oversized bags you can put your whole life into. <laughs> and I feel like we haven't really done that in a long time because we realized how damaging it was to our backs and shoulders. And we're probably going to get there again, but that's all right because I live for a big old bag. I love putting all my life into a bag. You definitely need something that is individual to you, what your style is when it comes to handbags. Personally, I think... Um, like, you know, a never full style bag like Louis Vuitton or the Goyard. I, I like that for my work life. Or I really have my eye on the Bottega um, hobo bag. I forget the, the actual name, but it's like, you know, the, the weft, the, the weaved material that it's known for. I want that big old bag. But it got a big old price tag too, so I don't know about that. But anyway, something like that is more my style. And then um, I also think that, uh, oh my God, a throwback would be like the Celine Phantom bag. That was a beautiful oversized bag as well. But it's a bit heavy when you put things in it. But we'll see what Phoebe is going to put out because I'm waiting for her to come out with this this fashion line of hers because I know she's due to do one. She's, she said she was going to do them. So. Phoebe said she was going to be doing something for us, so I'm waiting. We are all waiting. The girls are waiting. And also when it comes to like a medium-sized bag, you know, something that's structured, ladylike, can fit most of the things. Like a, my dream would be a Birkin one day. But you know, the medium size, not the oversized one, the medium size. Something like that. But 
you know what really gives me life and it's two different kinds that are like basically the same one has a much higher price point and the other is a wonderful price point my wonderful price point medium bag that i love and live for is my brandon blackwood and it's the kawaii bag i believe it's called and it has like a black croc pin and i feel that when i wear that it's like i'm a lady and i do business and you need to move out of my way and then another bag that's very similar to it is like the the saint laurent bag or the fanny peekaboo it's kind of similar like that silhouette i think is really beautiful in a medium size and then when it comes to like an evening clutch you know something that's small and quaint or something that you can also wear as like a crossbody that you can wear on the go if you're going to the grocery store and i know a lot of us especially in new york we have a small crossover body um crossbody bag and like a huge tote bag that we put everything in you know like those bags we tend to beat up our tote bags and then we have a cute little accessory moment with our crossbody small bag so you know just changing it up making sure that you have something that you can use every day something that you can use on the weekend and when you're going to dinner be mindful of those things that you choose and you know I think for an evening bag another dream bag that I don't have yet is the Bottega like classic small evening bag that like has a snap closure I'm telling you these things and I don't even know the names of the bags and that's okay I'm not judging myself because guess what I don't have the money for it right now anyway so I'm not gonna go buy it right now but I'll show post a picture of what I'm talking about because I think they're beautiful and just timeless and I feel that anyone with any kind of style can wear one and they can just choose the color that is just most individual to them and it's nice to pass something like that down I wouldn't go out and get like a Judith Lieb or anything like that but a Bottega snap clothes evening bag yeah that's cute and while we're in the accessories route i do think that belts are like doing a big thing this year like it's making a comeback i feel like we weren't really wearing belts for the last couple years mostly because we're probably wearing we're probably wearing things that are our fit and also because we were probably traumatized by the early 2000s when we used to wear like the ones that would hang off to the side or double our belts up <laughs> y'all remember that <laughs> i don't want to but i do <laughs> Mm, I don't want to wear belts like that never again in my life. But some of the designers tried it and put on some of their designs during, um, during fall fashion week. I saw that last year and I was like, well, we're not doing that again. But they brought them back in some capacity. But the ones that I'm most excited about are like the wide waist belts that cinch everything in. Like the Loewe Obi belt that I love and live for. I have one in the croc skin and they have one in denim it's not my favorite but i feel like a lot of people would love that and it pulls a lot of looks together it really does or even a thin belt with a clean classic buckle i think those with the higher waist pants that we are wearing like that with a nice suede belt or a beautiful um leather croc print leather le lizard print um faux all faux like you know I'm not saying go crazy with all these skins, but there's a lot of options that are faux and they have a beautiful aesthetic, you know? I think like little thin belts are the way to go and the wider belts that just cinch in an outfit. And if you're wearing like an oversized t-shirt or an oversized button down with a skirt and you put on a wide belt, it's giving Diane Keaton and it's really classy. It's giving really classy. And finally, a run through of shoes that I think are important to have. I believe one must, she's looking at me because she know, one must always have a nice pair of sneakers. And right now the dad sneakers are a thing. No, I'm not saying go out and get the Balenciaga looking Asics because they're Asics, but with Balenciaga-ness on it. Um, but like a New Balance, go that route. Another good pair of sneakers that I think are essential are the Chuck Taylor 70s. The 70s Chuck Taylor. There's a difference. The 70s Chuck Taylor is sleeker. It has way more cushion in the shoe. The toe of the shoe is much smaller and it looks so much less doofier than the other pair of Chuck Taylors with the wide toe. Please don't. Please don't do that. Um, get acquainted with the 70s chuck tail because that in a cream color or like a jewel tone it just it gives the ultimate throwback look um 
So get 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 yourself a pair of seventy Chuck Taylors if you haven't already. Another pair of shoes that I think are essentials are the loafers and or oxfords. I think they're smart, they're chic, they can go with dresses, they could go with the nice pin pinstripe pair of pants. It goes with a pair of jeans. Like loafers and oxfords can go a long route. I think it just depends on the person. Like some people are more so an oxford person and then other people love a good loafer, like the product loafers that people have been wearing to death since the last two years. Yes, I'm one of those people. I am people. I've been wearing mine to death, but they're good. It's giving Monica on friends in the 90s or yeah what's the other one jennifer anderson jennifer it you know what forget that it's giving queen latifah on living single because that's where friends got their idea anyway <laughs> the shade i don't care another pair of shoes that i think are going on the umpteenth year run is the dad sandal just like the dad sneaker the dad sandal is still there and basically the dad sandal is a birkenstock but if you want to go the designer route do birkenstock with a whole bunch of flair with all the bells and whistles it just goes with so much it really goes with so much it's really and it's like a very grounded look earthy but if you do it with like a marnie oh then you're by dew point too Mm -hmm. I live for it. I love a good pair of dad sandals. And two more things, especially in, this, in the springtime, a lovely classic ankle boot can take you a long way. It can take you a long way. It could elevate or casual or make a dress casual. It can make your straight leg denim look so chic and beautiful and it just elevates the silhouette on you, right? And another thing that I think all of us do need is you know all of us girls need are a beautiful pair of evening shoes like something strappy something with a little razzle dazzle something with a bit of satin but you know what keep it simple get a pair of black sandals that tie up around the foot or you know strap around your foot and it always elevates your look it makes you look taller it makes you look sleeker it makes you look like you have your shit together again auto paid bills we want our bills to be on auto pay. We don't want to think about those things. <laughs> Let auto pay deal with it. And when you have auto pay, <laughs> your life is together. <laughs> Let auto pay handle this. That is my bookkeeper. So, in all, that is a lot of things that I think are key essentials. But when you have them all in your wardrobe, in the colors and prints and patterns that you love and that are most individual to you, you don't have to feel like you have to go out there and buy outfits all the time when you have an event. You can mix and match all of these items. It can elevate a look. You can feel casual in these looks. Like I feel like every single item that I went through is something that can either look super cash or super dressy. And I feel that there's so many different ways now for all those essentials to come in a form that is so individual to you. So I hope this video helps. Please comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. If you made it this far, don't forget to subscribe and tell me what you think. But I really appreciate you tuning in with me yet again. And I hope you liked everything. Sorry for the sirens. I told y'all I live near a hospital, so I just hope the people are okay. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye, friends.